Welcome to another episode of Mile Point Three Garage. Today we're going to do something special. We're going to the island of Maui and we're going to go check out some Broncos on the island of Maui, bring you a few other sights. This is going to be an exciting trip. So, first, I got to put on my shirt, my hat, and the sunglasses, and possibly even a snorkel. Uh, no, let's do with that the sunglasses. That's much better. Now off to Maui to check out some awesome Broncos. So while we were on Maui, we noticed a lot of vehicles that we really liked, so we thought we'd choose some video of them. And uh, that included some Broncos, some VW buses that were there. Uh, we had a Blazer that was going up and down the road in Kihei for basically the entire five days. Uh, we also had a lot of Jeeps. This one in particular uh, was a CJ5 with a fiberglass tub. No top, no doors. Purpose built for going to the beach, and it had a race canoe on the top which made it really cool. I would have loved to have driven that. And then right across uh, from where we were staying in Kihei, there was this Bronco sitting at a condo there or at a residence, uh, taking up a couple of spaces. Didn't drive obviously because it had a block under the tire, but cool nonetheless. And then these two. These two were sitting outside of a snorkel and surfboard rental shop in Lahaina and uh, the shop was closed uh, and this was like in the middle of the day so I'm not sure what happened to that but these look like they may have been the owner's cars uh, and we think both of these are owned by the same person because they had the same tiki head in the uh, hanging from the rearview mirror this particular one had uh, kind of a newer gauge cluster in it uh, seat covers and a runner lined uh, bottom this one is a half cab uh, this one also looked like it had 33s on it, a little bit of a lift. It was named Brownie, and the green one was named Soylent Green, I guess that is. Uh, both of them were really cool. And this was the Bronco we actually came to see. We saw this Bronco driving past us on day one, and uh, it was a super great looking Bronco, as you'll see. And uh, looked like uh, we would probably never see it again, and I didn't get video of it because it was too quick. Uh, but just the next day, we were going to one of our surf spots there and noticed it sitting right in front of the wall in front of a place called The Cove. And left a note under the windshield asking if we could come and see it. Scott called us back and said, yeah, come on down, I'll meet you. Yeah. 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 So tell me about the Bronco one here. 1968? Um, I got this thing maybe about uh, six or seven years ago. Uh, the guy that had it, he owned it uh, for 15 years. He was one of the owners of Kula Produce. Okay. Up country. Uh, so we had it sitting there for 15 years and slowly working on stuff on it and then just ran out of time. So we got for sale. And here I am, I got it. I had a, I used to have a 74 back in Arizona when I lived in Arizona. That uh, I picked up, uh, had that digital loop printed and, and grind aligned, everything, the whole deal. So, so you were used to it then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I kicked myself in the butt still for selling that one because it was completely rust free. Uh, like right now, I'm, I'm waiting on a windshield print. Uh, they, only sell, they only sell the stainless windshield prints from. Uh, 
so because um, of COVID and everything, we're just on the way back up the corner. So I'm, I'm four months in now waiting for this <laughs> window frame. Oh my gosh. So that's one of the major, major uh, problems with living out here and having an old thing like this is get parts. Yeah, you probably never put a top on it. No. Uh, I have a full soft top and a half the doors. Yeah. But um, I want to say about two months after I bought it, pulled those things off and I haven't put back on since. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. I have a cover for it, you know, because we do get a little bit of rain in Kia, not that much though. But uh, I have a trail cover for it, so I'll put that on for light rain, and then I have a big cover for it. For the um, do, do you know when this came to why it's been on the wire? No, I'm not sure. Um, I hear, I always hear all kinds of stories about uh, Broncos being out here because they used to use them in the cane fields. Oh, okay. So, oh, really? Uh, yeah. Oh, so wow. they told me that a long time ago there used to be uh, quite a few Broncos out here. Um, and they came from uh, and we the fields. You don't see too many anymore. Um, there are a few here and there. That's what I was going to mention on Maui. How many other people there are? Yeah, I would say I, under 100. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm surprised there's not many. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, within the last, I would say, six months, I've seen more out here. Um, and I think we're getting a big influx of people that figured out that they work from home. So they're moving out, and so I've seen, within the last six months, I've probably seen probably about four or five Broncos that I've never seen on island before. No kidding. So, yeah, we're getting You're about to see the new ones, too, I bet. Yeah, I've seen a few of the sport ones, but none, none of the yeah. other ones yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. Walk uh, me around the truck. Tell me about it. Yeah, man. So, uh, under the hood. I actually, uh, it has the 289 still under the hood. Uh, it's got a larger cam. Um, so you notice I'm going to start it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just a little bit of work on the engine, uh, not too, too much. Replace the heads, replace the distributor, replace the air filter, got a real wood uh, brake system there, um, MSD ignition, Optima battery. Um, but as far as everything else, uh, a lot of the other stuff underneath here is original. Um, got this radiator because before I bought this 74, I mean, before I bought the 68, I bought a 74 out here. And that 74, I just rushed in and bought it. Didn't look at it too, too much. Once I bought it and started looking at it, it was way, way, way too rusty. Uh, yeah. So that was, that was beyond my skill level. I'm a YouTube mechanic uh, <laughs> and a YouTube body guy. Yeah. So uh, that was beyond my skill level. So I pulled some parts off of it, this radiator being one of them, this front bumper being another one. And then uh, I found somebody to sell that to that actually does uh, just restorations. I haven't seen it since though, so I'm not sure. Oh, really? Yeah. I noticed that on your pants. They're kind of like uh, customized there. Where yeah. does this come from? Well, this, is a, this isn't the original hood, of course. This yeah. is a fiberglass hood. So, yeah, this is all fiberglass hood. Uh, I do want an original hood eventually. Even though like, this one looks cool, I, I like the original hood. I don't know. I noticed that's the first thing I noticed on it. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't seen one fiberglass hood in a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Always, always work. You know, I got the headers on there. Uh, dual exhaust front and back, uh, coming out the rear um, on either side of the tires. Uh, what else have I done? You probably don't have to pass emissions up here, do you? No, yeah. no emissions. But we do have to pass a safety check. Oh yeah. So a safety check to make sure your blinkers work, your horn works, your lights work, your windshield wipers work, your uh, reverse lights work. Um, is that what that sticker is on the back of everybody's yeah, car? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Tires can't be sticking out a certain a certain deal. Yeah. Um, tint, they check the window tint and stuff like that. So. Mirrors, I have to have side mirrors. The cage, um, when I originally bought this thing, it had a cage in it. I didn't like it. It just was a, a couple of spots on the, on the homemade cage just didn't look like they would probably support it. If it actually, if I actually did roll over. Um, so I eventually pulled that thing out, got this cage from Wild Horses. Um, that was really expensive. <laughs> yeah, they, they yeah. and, uh, so it, it shipped it out in pieces, had a uh, uh, place up country welded up together for me. Uh, get, get that in there. So I pulled all the carpet out. This, this all had carpet in it. So I uh, ripped up all the carpet, took all the seats out, um, machined down the whole the whole uh, bed. Well, I shouldn't say machine now. Most of it was by hand. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so did all that and pulled out the floor pants. And rather than getting the floor pants uh, online, the thin floor pants, I actually had this custom made. So this is a quarter inch thick uh, diamond plate steel. So I had these guys, same guys that, did, that welded up the cage of the tree. Um, these guys fabricated this front piece for me. Uh, it's going to be there for a while. Oh yeah. yeah. This, this is going to be... This is part of the strongest part of the truck right now. Um, you know, I had a, had this built in right here, so you can pop that open. There's a little, uh, so you can get to the transmission linkage and all that stuff underneath there. Uh, Four-wheel drive works great in this thing. This is a three-speed. So originally the 68s were, they were three up the tree. Um, so this column, of course, has been replaced uh, since 68. And then the, uh, the transmission linkage was put into the floor. Right, so it's still it's still three speed uh, down there. Maybe one of these days we'll get a five speed different engine. Who knows? Well, I mean, do, yeah, do you, you don't need much more than three. I heard no, no, not much more than three. But my uh, my sync my sync roll started to go out for second gear, so I'm double clutching for yeah. second gear. Uh, what else? Center console, locking center console, of course. Uh, now all my switches on the front of that. All my lights, uh, a couple, couple little other touches, USB, you know, you need USB switches nowadays, so got some USB put in there, got my battery voltage put in there, cigarette lighter put in there, just in case you need it, some couple parts. Uh, one of the problems I really had out here is stereos. So, between rain and just the salt air and everything, I had replaced, within my first three years, I had replaced three different radios, right? So eventually I switched to this. It's called a Fusion. Um, so this is actually a fully encapsulated waterproof stereo. So this has been in the Bronco now for uh, I want to say three to four years. Oh yeah. Zero problems. Bluetooth connectivity, so it's awesome. Uh, I've got these speakers right here under the dash. Amazon. You know, same thing. Waterproof speakers. Um, I still have one of the originals in the dash. Uh, doesn't work anymore. It's in there. Uh, got some wakeboard tower speakers for the rear attached to the lower cage. Uh, so got a little bit of sound, it's nothing too crazy. Um, what else you got up here? Got two inch body lift on this thing. Right, yeah, what suspension uh, mods have you got? Like, Honestly, I, I haven't done anything. It came with the, the mods that it has. So I myself haven't, haven't yeah. done anything for, as far as the suspension goes. Uh, but I don't plan on going any bigger than it is. Yeah. I love the size that it is. I'm running 33 1250s. Um, I love these old rims. A buddy of mine that uh, restored a, he did an 84 Bronco. He originally had these rims for his 84. Bottom ran them for about a year and decided he wanted to go with big 20 inch rims. Yeah. And uh, so we had him sitting in his house for probably like five years. And uh, I took off his head. <laughs> So, Sounds like a pretty good kick though. They were chrome, um, but I blacked them all out. Yeah. Everything on this I blacked out. This anything I almost almost anything that you see that's kind of this uh, black I, I painted and blacked out. Rocker panels, all this other stuff. Um, dash. We did the dash. The wiring underneath the dash was trash. When I had it. You can imagine. Yeah. Fifty years of. People get on there splicing and stuff so, so like that. yeah, underneath the dash is all completely rewired all the way up to the engine plug. Uh, it's about 90% uh, rewired. Uh, bumper, I had this bumper shipped out. Uh, same thing, I think I believe I, believe I got this from Wild Horses. Uh, originally meant for a cooler, but you know, you got an old old truck like this, you got gear ground tools, <laughs> tools, tow straps, jumper cables, all that stuff. A um, couple different tow hitches on it. These swing out. So everything still swings out, so still use everything. High lift jack in case you get in trouble. Gas can. Only have a 12 uh, gallon gas tank, which is the original gas tank on this thing. You know, all these don't get you know, gas mileage. I was so. going to say, you probably don't make me much more down on the island. Though. Yeah, I don't think this thing's too far. 
So, still use the tailgate and everything. Always got my boots here in there. Um, but yeah, the whole thing like this is right on um, So, I can just take a hose in there. Yeah, super quick. Rinse out all the sand and all that stuff. Yeah, especially here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right there. What kind of uh, off road scene is there in Maui? Is there anything uh, out here? There is a little bit of off road scene in Maui. Uh, a lot of off road that you do, you gotta go on uh, the back side of the island, so the south side of Maui. Oh, okay. over there, over in like Kaupo area. Um, there's some actually rock calling that you can do uh, back in those areas. Um, you try to tend to stay away from the really lava rocky areas. They just tear the tower. However, yeah. Um, yeah. some people go uh, logging and stuff through the, the through the old cane fields. You know, and you get some rain over there on the north shore. You got all these different roads, dips, and everything that you can go through on the cane fields and have fun over there. Oh, cool! So it's pretty cool. But uh, it's nothing like Arizona. I came from Arizona, you know. So there are just tons over there. Yeah, yeah. You got one? Uh, yeah, we have two. Two. Oh. They're both in restoration. Okay. Yeah. What year? Um, so, yeah, one of them is 74, I'm saying. I've got a new one of what that I'm supposed to get okay. uh, in August. Cool. So, two door portal. Four door open. Yeah, yeah, I've got a couple of kids, so. Yeah. But, yeah, so we play around with Broncos. We decided to restore both of them at the exact same time. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, the whole garage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, to beat, beat that, we. We finished uh, the chassis and engine on one, and the body on the other. <laughs> so yeah, we didn't even do it in the right order. <laughs> so, she's trying to convince me. I'm to like, we could put them together. One, put it on the other, and have one whole complete. <laughs> right, right. Over. We haven't done that yet. So, that one's yeah. mine and one's his. Yeah, nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Good for you guys. Uh, I have an old van too. See the oh, van do you really? Oh. Not that old. Like, mine's an '84, but. Yeah. Yeah, I got a little uh, 84 must fall Oh, no kidding. Oh, yeah, nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. We got that thing all <laughs> pretty much dialed in, too. It's down right now, though, for uh, a prank shop. Yeah, man, I can't wait to go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, Scott, thank you very much, man. Yeah, I appreciate man, absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I know you guys took some time out of your Sunday to come out here and meet. Oh, that's that's perfect. Uh, yeah, like I said, I saw you. I thought, oh my god, that thing is so freaking cool. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate we're it. We're modded out, uh, but not too much. Like, so super clean that you can't live on an island with it. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that was my big thing, and that's that's one of the things I tell all my friends and all these other people. Like a lot of the other Broncos that you see everywhere. Uh, Garage queens, right? Yeah. They sit in the garage. They take them out for the Sunday drive. I was like, I only got this one life to live. I'm gonna drive this truck every day as much as I can. Boom! And just like that, we are back in Colorado. I want to appreciate Scott and his family for coming down on that Sunday and hanging out with us for a little bit. We saw his Bronco driving by on the first day that we were there, and uh, man, I was like, if I could just catch up with him and uh, video his Bronco. That would be awesome. It was it was such a great looking ride. You know, it's a fairly decent size island. I didn't think I'd catch up with him. But then one day on our way to uh, a surf spot, um, we saw his Bronco right in front of the wall, right in front of the cove. It was like it was meant to be. Left a note for him. And then thankfully he texted me back and said, yeah, I'd love for you to see the Bronco come on down. Met us on that Sunday. And what a great family. You can tell that they're living every minute of the Hawaiian life out there. And, uh, and just a totally awesome group of people. Uh, I did take away a few things from my time on Maui. And just like Scott said, you know, we should be driving these things every single day of our lives because our life is only so long. And being on that island for this last week and seeing all of the different vehicles that were out there and most of them being used uh, in daily purpose uh, with no top and no doors, uh, and basically, whatever happens to it, happens to it, and I'll replace parts if I need to. Uh, that attitude rings through me. So get out there right now and go drive your Bronco. Get out there and enjoy it. And that is a wrap from Off One Through Garage. We are going to continue on these Broncos, so subscribe and hang out with us. You can help us through this project, and we'll get this done. So, uh, Bronco Super Celebrations in September. I'm still holding on to 
a very small hope that I'm gonna make it to that Bronco Super Celebration with one of the other Broncos.